for the next uh, minutes, we'll start with the uh, first for GEO Data Challenge Award Ceremony. And for this, I will invite um, a lot of, uh, well, a couple of persons on the scene uh, for awarding the thematic awards. And uh, I will start by uh, introducing the, the challenge uh, that you all know already. It was published on the uh, conference website for quite a long time uh, when we kept the uh, call open. And uh, this is uh, a challenge that was uh, uh, addressing, as you said, many topics that are related to the Earth observation. And we wanted to, to give it this focus on data and uh, the satellite data that uh, Francesco was been, has been talking about uh, uh, before. Of course, uh, with uh, this kind of uh, endeavor, we had to involve a lot of people. And uh, there are not a few. And uh, I think we, uh, with this opportunity, we uh, I kindly ask you to thank them uh, again a lot for uh, getting, uh, for uh, giving us their support and participating in the, in this activity. Thank you very much again to, to all the. Now uh, we received uh, around uh, 30 uh, proposals, in uh, from which we selected. Uh, uh, the, the eligible ones, uh, but in the end we had 12 competitors who reached the final uh, phase. And uh, what is good, and I think uh, it's really good, we'll award eight prizes with the contributions, uh, as I said, of the organizations being uh, mentioned here, ECMWF, European Commission, SI Imaging, uh, GAF AG, CS Romania, Demos Romania, and Godan. And uh, again, please give them a big hand of applause for supporting this competition. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, we, uh, we couldn't uh, award the MIO prize for the best application uh, dedicated to the ADAM platform. Uh, because no application on this topic has reached the final phase. But we hope to be uh, more lucky for the next phases. But besides that, let's applaud Mio for their kind intention to, to give a prize. <laughs> well, this being said, I think we can go for uh, knowing the winners. And for this, uh, as I said, I will invite on the stage some of the representatives of the organizations who uh, ag agreed to, to award prizes, and I will start with ECMWF, and I will ask Sylvie to, to come on the stage. Sylvie, please. Yes, thank you. I'm, I'm very proud to represent ECMWF today and to give the name of the, uh, the winner for the ECMWF challenge. I also would like to take the opportunity to thank the organizer for this fantastic conference. Yeah, it's not yet. <laughs> uh, we, I think we were, 10 of us were here and we, we had a fantastic week. And uh, it was very inspiring to see uh, how our data are used and we will certainly continue to try to deliver the best uh, data for you. Then, but then, first uh, name, uh, it's uh, Alexandru. Dumitrescu, uh, and uh, uh, he received the prize for. Is he here? Uh, yeah, uh, because of you know logistic uh, issues, <laughs> uh, uh, we just ask the the people who are the winners to stand up uh, because there is uh, not so easy to come on the stage. If Alexandre is here, please stand up. No. 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 Anyway, so he has a very nice. Let's congratulate him nice again price. and uh, go for the next one. Um, the next uh, winner is Xingun Hu for his work on semantic cementation on forest fires. If Sikon is in the room, again, please stand up. No. No. Okay. Congratulations Fair. again. Oops. <laughs> 
And uh, the last one is uh, for Theodora, Celia, and, his, and her team. So uh, please stand up. Okay. okay. So this time I'd like you to have somebody in the room. Yes. We'll give it back. Yeah. Thank and with this, uh, we thank Sylvie for the kindness and the, the support, uh, the consistent support they provided to the challenge by awarding three prizes uh, in our competition. Thank you very much again, ECMWF. <laughs> for the next one, I invite on the stage the representative of the European Space Agency, Dr. Thomas Baer. The European Space Agency is uh, providing a consistent prize. Thomas, please, tell us. Okay, I'll take this one. Uh, yeah, hi, no panic. Uh, there will be no uh, keynote speech or anything similar. Just to say thank you to, um, to Jan and the organizers to have uh, organized this very brilliant and successful and very uh, insightful uh, event. As he said, uh, as Jon said, I am representing the European Space Agency, more particularly the uh, Copernicus program, which is dealt with in uh, ESRIN, our ESRIN establishment next to Rome in Fascati, maybe known to some of you, city of the good white wine, but also city of science. And ESA in ESRIN is taking care, amongst other things, of the Copernicus program management in ESRIN. <clears throat> and this is why we were also, also very happy to be a juror here in this uh, event. Uh, this is an Earth observation event, and whenever I hear Earth observation, I would like to see uh, Copernicus, because this is something you need to know if you, t if you speak about EO. This is free and open data from our Sentinel satellites. And this is why we were, of course, keen to see also in your proposals a uh, relationship to Copernicus to uh, Sentinels. Many of these ideas have been making use of these uh, data, so these came, of course, in more close consideration. Um, in the end, it was not so easy to find the winner because they were really good, the ideas. I was uh, really impressed. It's not the first time that I am sitting on a jury, and also in 10 days I will be on a jury when we have our own big app camp in, uh, in ESRI, in, in, in ESA, Frascati. So, uh, but we had to make a decision, and this was uh, taken today, this afternoon. And in the end, the winner was yeah, more or less a clear winner, because the idea is just tempting. It is an idea which deals with the detection of um, so-called dark vessels, which are plowing the seas without letting us know who they are. I mean, this is an uh, issue which is very political, it's very topical, it's a hot potato sometimes. We need to know sometimes what kind of ship is going from there to there and what is it carrying. And it's not always easy, even if there's an obligation for, some, for ships of a certain size to carry an identification device. It's too easy to switch it off. And in order to get also hold of these guys, there are now technologies existing, already implemented by EMSA, the European Maritime Safety Agency, and assisted by through the European Satellite Center, and also helped by the European Space Agency to get after these and uh, develop the technology. And this idea is exactly uh, what uh, I am now going to uh, uh, tell you, which has uh, won this ESA special prize. And here we are. Is it? Ah, I have to move it. Here we go. Yes. It's the team of Adrian Toftin. It's a Norwegian team. I don't think they, they are here today, otherwise I would be surprised. No, these guys are leaving. So <laughs> this is a Norwegian team whom I will see already in 15 days or so from now because they have won the first prize, which consists of coming to Esrin, to our app camp. And this is something quite specific because we will pay them the flight tickets back and forth, of course, from Norway to Esrin, 
They have uh, around eight days in a nice hotel with swimming pool in Esrin. All expenses paid. They have the whole week from the 16th to the 23rd of September in Esrin, in our Frascati uh, establishment. They will get lectures. They will see our Phi Lab, our famous future-oriented experimental lab, where we, will, where we are dealing with artificial intelligence and machine learning, and they will go there and, and check it out. And we will have an astronaut there, uh, an active astronaut coming to Frascati for that occasion and speaking to them and uh, letting them know what he's doing right now, preparing for another spacewalk. So this prize is just amazing. They will go there for one week, and Adrian Tofting is the head of this little group, and I can only say congratulations. I get a kind of certificate, I think, which I will take with me, and I will present it to myself at this point in time, and I will give it to him <laughs> in 10 days from now, or 15 days. Thank you very much, and applause. For Yeah, I think uh, we can, uh, we shall go to the next one. And for the next one, I uh, kindly invite on the scene the representative of SI Imaging for uh, telling us who is the winner of the prize they uh, want to, uh, to award. So, SI Imaging. Hello. Um, first of all, thank you very much for the, the nice organizers. I had a quite wonderful time here. Um, this is my first time for this conference, and then quite surprised to, uh, how to say, very family like the, the atmosphere. Actually, this is the most casual decluding that I can have at this moment. <laughs> So maybe next year I'll bring my shorts and then, you know, t-shirts and etc. So the reason that we, uh, first of all, I needed to explain about my company. The uh, company is called the SI Imaging. And the Korea government has four very high-resolution res high satellite systems, and they wanted to commercialize a bit. And then we are the part of it, so we are selling the very high-resolution data worldwide. The reason that we uh, decided to support that, this event, actually, we believe with the free data and with the, our commercial data, we are not free, sorry about that. But combining the two the different the, the resources, we believe we can achieve better results. And then and, uh, I wish to see the other results from this society, actually. Um, as you mentioned in all the presentation, there are many the small operators now. Many countries have their own the satellite system, and they are trying to sell the data. So if you can help us to survive in this market, then you will have more resources to provide your data, and then that will reduce the cost of your data. So please help not just us. I mean, there are many small operators that you can help us. Thank you very much. And So this, uh, this is the first time for us to provide the data, and then one the nice gentleman actually provided a very interesting result. Um, so the winner of uh, SI Imaging Services Award will be yeah, uh, Bang Pam Hu, who presented the compulsory satellite support for farming in Germany. Please. <laughs> Thank you very much. Very wonderful job. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much again, uh, SI Imaging, for supporting our, uh, our challenge. Uh, there are still prizes to be awarded, and uh, for the next one, I invite uh, Francesco Barbato to tell us what is the prize he wants to award and to whom. <laughs> Francesco, please. Thank you. So. Oh. Thank you very much. No? All right, so 
as I explained to you my, during my speech before, so one of the um, reasons why we, the Commission has set up such a program, a Copernicus program, is to help with policy support. And uh, we thought that it would have been nice to give the award to uh, an application that was helping uh, solving uh, uh, public policy challenges, public challenges, societal challenges. So for this reason, we thought that the best application that we evaluated was dealing with landslides. And uh, the award goes to, no. yes, this one. So it goes to Vasil Yordanov and her team for the work uh, on landslide detection and monitoring. Please give it up. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Yeah, as you saw, we had a, a, a mistake here in the order of uh, presenting the prizes, but I hope you just didn't notice it, but, and just fake, you didn't notice it. So for the next, uh, for the next prize, I invite the representative of uh, GAFI G uh, on the scene to present the prizes they want to award. Marcus, please. Thank you very much. Um, yes, thank you, Ian. Um, I'm very happy to be here and uh, to announce the, the winner of our challenge. Um, I, was, I was very surprised because uh, I was never participating um, in such a thing and uh, I think it's an awesome thing, especially for the... Uh, oh. uh, especially for the um, uh, open source community and especially the open source community in, uh, in GIS. And yeah, um, I want to thank some people uh, um, because they helped me out with this challenge and um, it was very funny with them. Um, first, uh, for the Mundi Web Services, they offered us all the, the infrastructure for the participants and offered it totally for free and they, I think that helped very out for them. And yeah, uh, another uh, help uh, was given by uh, Synergize and they offered us to, to put our data on the Sentinel Hub. The, the participants had to use uh, uh, an Indian satellite data, uh, which was not very easy to, 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 to use at the beginning, but it worked out very well. And uh, at last, I want to thank my own company, my CTO, my CEO, because um, I asked them if we can do this and uh, make this happen. And they immediately, immediately um, answered, yeah, of course, we can do this. Uh, no problem, just uh, put it up and talk to Ian and Basil. And yeah, it was awesome. And uh, yeah, now I want to present the, the winner. Backwards. Yes. Uh, it's William Ouellette and his team. Yeah, I, I saw the, the stuff they produced and they had a very short time frame, everybody there. And I was really impressed what people can do if they um, have the passion and the focus to, to do some challenge and put everything into it. Thank you. Thank you, Marcus. Yeah, I think there's one more left. <laughs> um, and for the, for the last one, I, maybe I would call it, uh, let's say, the technology prize of the, of the EU Data Challenge. Although we, we're talking with the, among the members of the jury, we didn't have such a prize, maybe a such prize. Maybe there would be an idea for the, for the next edition of, the, of this challenge. And uh, this technology prize is going to be of Ivan's. Ivan had provided a spectacular solution. <laughs> and I'm, uh, I'm, I, I'm happy to, to say that Ivan is uh, one of the, the winners of, uh, of uh, our challenge. I think I have uh, your agreement to thank again all of, uh, of the people involved. And... Uh, to uh, congratulate again the, the winners of the, of the challenge. I, and I think I'm not, we are not finished with the, uh, with the prizes. 
Uh, and I uh, invite uh, on the scene the, the, the person who will uh, tell us who is the, who is the Soul Cats Award winner this year. Please. Hello. We need a minute to uh, get the slides ready. So maybe you can. Yeah, you can go. Yeah. The award is here, well covered. So no one will. Maria, I give it to yes. you. Thank you. So let's see. You, you don't have the name on any of the slides, right? No, no, no. no good. No, no, no. <laughs> no we are good. Well we'll keep the so Let's keep the suspense going. So each year at FOS4G, we, the Salcat Award recognizes exceptional contributions from someone from the community uh, to the OSGO mission. And by exceptional contributions, we don't mean only um, code, but actually you know, all sorts of involvement at different levels of, the, of our community. So I have a chance to be here today with uh, three other former Salcats Award uh, recipients. So Astrid from, actually on the next slide, I think we have uh, the names, right? So Astrid from last year. Uh, Andrea Aimi had to leave early, he was with us this week, so he was the winner in 2017. Uh, Maria was the winner in 2015. And then you go back in time, there's myself in 2019, and Marcus, 2006. In my case, 2009, not 19. So, a bit of info about Soul Cats, just to put things in context, and I'm going to read to make sure I don't forget anything. So, Soul Cats was an early pioneer of uh, Phos4G in the early 80s. Uh, he worked on the MOS project, and he left behind a big body of work in the form of application file formats, uh, application and utilities, while he was working at the U United States Bureau of uh, Land Management. He's been a frequent contributor to uh, various software on, ma on mailing lists. So essentially, he was doing what we're doing today, but several years ago. Unfortunately, he passed away in 1999 from a non-Hodgkin's non lymphoma, but his legacy lives on with this award. So I'll keep the suspense. I'll let Astrid talk now. Okay. Uh, go ahead, Astrid. Yeah, so let's, let's find out who will be the winner this year. For me, it was a big honor to receive it last year, and it was a big surprise. And here is the award, well covered. It came a long way from Canada. Jeff McKenna uh, organized the production and shipped the award um, in time for the event. Okay, I talk a bit about the winner, and maybe step by step you will guess who this person could be. So, um, yeah. The winner this year is always kind and humble, but it's a person who is not standing in the spotlight. It is a person who does, but not so often. Um, it's someone um, who is a real community person, and maybe not all of you may know him in person, and, but <coughs> the person... <laughs> Oh no, ah. the person, sorry. Um, yeah, but. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, but. Um, so let's look a bit, go on. So, um, yeah, it's a person who is highly active and who is contributing a very, very lot to the OSTU community contributing by a lot of commits that this person is doing. He, um, the person is committing a lot to OSU projects like GDL, Kugis, uh, Proj, um, what else, Map Server. <laughs> <laughs> so you may guess, So, but let's have a closer look. This person, committed in the last five years over 10,000 commits to all these projects, and I didn't list all of them. So if we do some mess, uh, that are more, that's more than one commit per hour, if you think of a day with eight hours work. Um, and these commits don't cover the support mails in the mailing list or the community um, stuff around. So that's quite a lot of uh, activity. Okay, 
It looks like some of you already suspected who the winner would be. <laughs> okay, it's a man. And I'm very proud to, uh, to um, announce that it is Yves Rohr who will um, receive the Sol Kotz Award this year, 2019, from Ulcio. So please, even come closer.